Hi everybody, um, I'm Vanessa from The Spinner Stash and tonight I am going to be doing Andy and Plying on the Drop Spindle. Um, I'm just a couple minutes early so we'll go ahead and hang out for about two minutes and then we'll go ahead and get started. Um, so by trade, I guess, um, Drop Spindling is like my actual niche. Um, I do spinning on the spinning wheel and um, all kinds of other fiber arts as well. Um, I do weaving, I do a little tiny bit of crocheting, um, I do knitting, um, but the drop spindle is my absolute favorite. And um, once you learn how to use the drop spindle to make your own yarn, um, then it's it's really exciting for a while and then you're like, okay now I need to move on to the next step and so um, The next step would be plying which is where you add uh, Multiple pieces of yarn together to make one strong piece of yarn and I'll talk a little bit more about that um, when um, When I'm wrapping up my yarns um, so that way uh, we have something to talk about while I am actually doing the process um, but that's kind of what we're gonna be doing today, and I'm gonna do it like a little bit funny if you if you're here um, Just say hello and maybe where you're from and if you're working on a craft if you're here to learn how to Andy and ply on a drop spindle or if you've never seen it done or done it before um, Just kind of let me know um, because it's just gonna be kind of an open chat um, Otherwise, I'm just gonna ramble on and just talk to myself about myself and the things I like to do <laughs> so um, I don't have Jonah here tonight to help me out I didn't I didn't really need his help and also he's upstairs playing Minecraft or something and then my husband's upstairs watching Primmy so I don't have a baby tagging along at me um, so it looks like we have a couple people here which is fine there will be a lot of people um, watching the playback so I'm gonna go ahead and get started and like I said it's gonna be like a little bit out of order um, the way that I do this demo um, because I'm going to talk more about um, Andy and plying and different kinds of plying um, as I'm doing the process um, just so we have something to talk about. So first, just as an intro, um, this is a drop spindle. So if any of you are here and you don't know what drop spindling is, um, it is a tool um, used to spin uh, fibers into yarn and I have so so much fibers just around. I don't know why I'm having a hard time picking something up. So like roving or even loose fibers, anything, um, you, it adds the twist and you make a yarn. So this is a single, this is just a single that I spun, um, yesterday. Um, and this is what we're going to be using. So if you're going to go, if you're going to, um, pile along, then what you'll need is your drop spindle and um, filled with a single. So hopefully uh, some of you already have that ready to go. If not, then just, you know, craft along and then take notes and then you guys can come back and do it later. So we have our single here. We're gonna get started with the process of plying um, and we'll talk about it. So I'm gonna scoot you guys back here with me cause I'm gonna actually sit down because I have been a little bit poorly the last few days, so. I'm just gonna relax while we do this next part and I can talk to you guys and see you guys really good if you want to chat so the first thing that we're gonna do with our single is obviously we're gonna locate the end here and this is by no means like the only way to do this um, I'm just gonna show you my process okay so you'll take the end of your single and what I like to do is just um, fold it back on itself a couple inches like two inches and I just tie a nice little loop here so there's gonna be a little loop just on the end and a simple nice easy loop okay and then I'm going to on my non-dominant hand on my thumb I'm gonna put the loop so this is so we don't lose the end um, while we are wrapping for our ply okay so um, instead of needing um, additional bobbins or spindles, um, we're just going to use our hand as a bobbin um, to then go back and ply onto this same spindle. Okay, 
So I'm going to show you how we wrap it. So you have on your non-dominant hand, um, hooked onto your thumb here, hold your spindle in your other hand. And what you're going to do, I'm going to try and do this facing you instead of facing me, which is going to be a little bit weird, but I'm pretty sure I could do it. So you're going to come around the back of your hand and then you're going to come across the front of your hand. Oh, let me take these. Let me take these rings off. I've learned my lesson. I, I should have done that before. Okay. So rings off, watches off, bracelets off. Um, come across the front of your hand to your middle finger, and then you're going to wrap it around your middle finger and then across the front. So there should be like an X on your palm. Then you'll go back around the back across around your middle finger and back down. And you're just gonna keep doing this until the whole thing is on your hand. Now, um, lesson learned just for my early days, do not do this tight, do it nice and loose because by the time that you get to the end, um, your fingers will be all chubby and purple. Um, you'll cut off your circulation. So try and do it nice and relaxed and loose um, and Again, so we'll bring it around the back, wrap it around the middle finger, and around the front. Back, middle, front. And then you'll get in a groove where you can just kind of do it like magic. And this is going to take a while um, to do. So let me, I'm going to keep going over it and over it every once in a while just so you guys don't get confused. So this is facing towards you so you can see. So you bring it from the back across the palm to the middle finger, wrap it around the middle finger and then bring it down to the other side. So you should be seeing like an X here and then around the back, around the middle finger and down. Back, middle, down. Back, middle, down. Back, middle, down. And so you're just going to keep doing that. So the Andy applying is what we're doing. Okay. And what this does is, like I said before, it makes it so that way you can, if you only have one drop spindle and you don't want to traditionally ply, because with um, traditional drop spindles and traditional plying, you would basically need three drop spindles. You would have the two cops that are on your two drop spindles of your singles. And then you would need a third drop spindle that was empty with a leader or not a leader. It doesn't, doesn't matter if you have a leader or not. And, um, you would then ply them like you would on a spinning wheel if you were doing like two separate bobbins. Okay. So that's three drop spindles. So if you only have one, um, this is the perfect way to ply because you're only using one drop spindle one single in your hand, okay? And when you ply this, you're plying it from the beginning of the yarn to the end of the yarn, so it's gonna create a two ply, okay? And this is not to be confused with the Navajo ply, which is what I was originally going to do, also called a chain ply. When you do that, you're making loops and you're bringing it through and it's creating the illusion or creating um, a triple ply from a single ply. Okay. And that's, that's called Navajo plying. And that's a little bit more complicated to do on a drop spindle than say a spinning wheel. But, um, this Andean plying is definitely quite simple and it's the best way to get your two ply and use minimum tools. Um, it just takes a while, but any craft that you're going to do is going to take a while. And it's the whole process that's relaxing. Like I'm still talking to you. I'm doing this repetitive motion. And at the same time, I'm making something and it's going to be really awesome. Um, so let's see here. I put, I put down a couple notes just in case no one was talking. Cause I see, I see that there's people on here watching and no one's really talking and that's fine. Um, I get it. So I'm just going to um, go over what the wrapping that I'm doing, just in case anybody just got on. So I have my spindle with my single on it. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
And then I'm gonna go around the back, oops, across my palm. So you're going to the opposite side of your center finger, bring it around your center finger and then to the opposite side and then back around the back and you just keep doing that. So that's what I'm doing. I'm wrapping it on here. I've actually made a tool with cardboard and <laughs> duct tape and it was really awesome um, because I wanted to chain ply using my spinning wheel. Um, and um, obviously when I use my spinning wheel to spin yarns, I get a lot more yardage. Um, so I can't fit it all onto my hand. It's just like this huge ball of wool. So. Um, I, I made a tool <laughs> that I used and it was awesome, but we moved house and I can't find it. So that kind of sucks, but, um, so it looks like I might be about halfway done wrapping here. So we're just going to keep going, keep going. And as you can see here, like I'm wrapping very gently and loosely, but my middle finger, you can see. It's already turning a little bit purple. <laughs> so you wanna make sure that you're just doing it as loose as possible. I mean, if you're going slower, it's probably better, but I'm just trying to make it not as boring for you guys because this process takes a little bit. And all the meanwhile, we have our little loop on our thumb so I could still see where my end is. We're not gonna lose it. So that's why I make the loop. Um, it's not mandatory, but definitely, I definitely recommend it. Um, so I, I see there's like a few people on here. Where are you guys from? What are you guys up to? Are you crafting along? Are you um, just watching? Um, I'm here in South Georgia, very close to the North Georgia or the North Florida border, which is about 15 minutes away. It's like 85 degrees outside and it's very sunny. I was gonna actually do the show outside, but then um, I thought I didn't wanna get bit up by mosquitoes because it's starting to get, the sun's starting to go down. So I decided against it. So we're sitting in here. And to me, this is just so like, relaxing and therapeutic just wrapping it like after all day of just being on with my kids you know just the entertainment and listening to them mommy mommy it's just so nice to just sit here and just have like kind of zone out you know and um so the closer we get to the end <laughs> you gotta be a little little nimble with your fingers on this other hand because then I have to kind of turn it more um, and then that's when it also starts getting a little bit more tight so make sure the whole time you're really trying to make it nice and loose um, you don't want to cut off your circulation <sighs> I is I, I wonder if maybe I don't I can't see, or maybe nobody's making any comments. I don't know. Is anybody ma making comments? If someone is here, swipe left to reveal comments and reactions. I am, and it's not working. <laughs> I'm such a boomer. Okay, maybe if somebody that is on can just say hello, or... Oh, I think I see. Oh, okay. I think I see comments now. Oh no, it's been going this whole time and oh, okay. So hi, uh, so are we not doing chain plying? Okay. So I was going to do Navajo plying, which is also called chain plying. Um, and I was told that that's, a, it's more advanced than this. And this is a very good basic skill to have Andean plying. So we're going to start with the Andean plying and then I, I might do chain plying like next week. And I apologize for misleading you. Um, 57 degrees and no mosquitoes. Nice. Um, so yes, we are doing Andean plying, not the Navajo plying tonight. And I apologize. I apologize for that. 
Um, but we will do it. I will teach you. Um, but for now, we're going to do this because this is really good for beginners and I want to set you guys up right. Um, so for anybody who's just coming on, I saw a couple people who just came back on. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and, and just really quickly again go over. So I have my drop spindle here with just a single. Um, and I'm wrapping it onto my hand, preparing for Andy applying, which is going to make this single into a two ply without using any other tools or, um, oh, I'm sorry, Evelyn. It, it's cool. Like I'm going to do another one. Don't worry. And then I could do like really fun ones. I make all kinds of art yarns and stuff on the drop spindles. It's like kind of my special thing. So, um, don't worry. There'll be more. <laughs> It's kind, it's kind of a, so the difference between chain plying, that's a good question. Um, the difference between Navajo plying and Andean plying is that the Andean plying that we're doing is going to make this into a two ply and Navajo plying or chain plying um, would make it into a three ply. <laughs> yeah, so, um, so what we're doing now is just wrapping it and getting it ready. So we're taking it around the back of our hand, across the front and around the middle finger and back around. And so, um, and then you just keep doing that until all your single is wrapped up. And I'm probably three quarters of the way there for you guys. So I'm trying to go fast so you're not just watching me do this the whole time. Um, I'm a beginner. Thank you for doing. Oh yeah, no worries. I love teaching people this because honestly, like I, I, I didn't even discover like spinning, like drop spinning until I was like 30. Um, and I just thought it was the most incredible thing. And I thought people need to know, like, I can't, my mind is blown right now. What is this witchery? Um, and I just love it so much. So I, I don't mind, um, doing these tutorials. I want everybody to be a spinner. Plus like, it's a good, like post-apocalyptic, like skill to have, you know? So when Armageddon comes, like we'll all be good. Um, just bought two garbage bags full of raw wool today. Ooh, wash, dry, card and spin. Holy cow. Yeah. You're in for the whole thing. Yep, you're hooked for life now. <sighs> okay, we are getting there because I can see like the old yarn on there. Oh yeah, it's turning to the blue, which I, cause I started a different, um, oops, I just wrapped that one funny. I started a different yarn on this with a different color roving. It was like this blue. Um, and then I decided, mm, I don't really want to spin this one. And I wanted to spin up my colorway, the Rolex that I made last month for, um, so this is getting into the blue and there's a little bit of the blue left on there. And I'm just going to go ahead and, um, ply it in with the green because I don't mind my yarns looking all crazy. I like them to look crazy and not matchy. So I'll just go ahead and get the rest of this on here. What, so what breed of um, raw wool did you buy, Allison? It's Allison, right? Can you show the wrap one more time slow? Yes, absolutely. All right, so, and I, it's it's hard <laughs> it's hard for my brain to do it facing this way, but so you're gonna have your hand out in front of you, wrap around the back of your of your hand, so it's just coming around the back. Bring it up across your palm to the opposite side of your middle finger, around the middle finger, and then to the opposite side of the palm. And then back around the back, opposite side of the middle finger, around the middle finger, opposite side of the palm, around the back, around the middle, 
around the back, around the middle, around the back, around the middle, and then I'm almost at the end here. Um, was that slow enough or, um, and, uh, I can always like kind of write it, <laughs> I guess, or you got, you can watch it as many times as you need to. Um, and it does take like, just once you get in the groove after you've been practicing, you can wrap it really fast. Like I, I wrap this pretty quickly. Um, all right, we're coming to the end here. All right. So I'm at the end. My leader is this really pretty pink uh, color. So I'm gonna leave my leader on. I'm gonna just break my yarn off. So, and make sure you don't lose the end. That's very important. Yes, a figure eight. Yeah, yes. <laughs> it's just hard to, if you say, oh, figure eight around your hand, people are like, yeah, I don't know what that means. <laughs> but yeah, in essence, once you see it, once you get it, you'll, you'll remember it. All right. So the next step, um, I like to tie my ends together before I slip off, um, any yarn because I really get scared that I'm going to like mess it up. So we're going to take, remember we tied, um, the top end to our thumb. So we have it, we didn't lose it. And then pull that out in the front here. Take your other end that you just pulled off your leader and then I just literally just put them together and then tie it. It's going to be ugly, but I, this is just, it's the end of the yarn. It doesn't matter what it looks like. I just want them to be connected and they're not going to go anywhere. And also when I have this big fat blob of ugly right here, um, I, I usually won't lose it. All right. So the next step is like really critical. <laughs> So make sure you don't lose this. And then you're gonna put your hand put your hand up. So it should look like this. You should have like an X going in the front and then it should just be going around the back here. You're gonna put your middle finger down and then you're gonna just slide this entire loop and your finger out, okay? So my finger was in and now my finger's out. And then it's gonna be like this weird bundle of crazy nonsense there um it's pretty tight it's it shouldn't really fall apart so just try not to shake it around too much um and i'm gonna do something really weird right now that most people don't do but i do because i'm just weird about which hand i spin with and what's comfortable for me so do whatever is comfortable for you um but what i do is i very gently and cautiously and scaredly um, slide this off my hand. Boy, it's a nice hole and you want to make sure none of the, none of the strings go any which other way. And I forgot to take my other ring off too. Um, so take off your jewelry and then what you're going to do is you s slip your other hand just through the same this is just what I do, like I said, um, you can leave it on the same hand. And then I have the big blob that was sitting on the top, I always point it down. You can do it however you want um, and what's comfortable for you. So I still have my ugly end, it's right there. We didn't lose it, which is awesome. And now I'm gonna stand because um, we're about ready to start plying. So I'm gonna move you guys back. So you can see, I'll try not to point you looking into my bathroom. All right, so we have our drop spindle and our leader, very standard. Um, I am going to be plying this. So instead of going clockwise, I'm gonna be going anti-clockwise. So you wanna make sure um, that you unravel your leader if you have one on there, because you're gonna be, well, I guess it doesn't, doesn't matter just whichever way that you wrap it. Anyways, I don't know. I'm just talking. All right. So get your leader. Um, you want to have at least the six inches, the same as if you were spinning, um, spinning your single. So you'll get your end here. And what I do is 
I have a loop. I always have this loop on my leader. It just lives there forever. Um, and then I just will tuck my, I just tuck my two through the leader and then fold it back on itself. The end is gonna be ugly, don't worry about it. So then you should have like two strings um, kind of coming off your hand. You see how the two are coming off either side of my hand? Okay, so you go ahead and pinch just above your leader there. And whenever you ply, you want to spin anti-clockwise, like I said. So we're going to give it a nice little push that way and then start letting the twist. Oops, let me get lined up here. Start laying the twist in. And then you're gonna be basically putting your hand in and out of this hole to let more and more of the yarn out. And this is gonna ply. And then as you ply, you're gonna wind it up onto your drop spindle just as you would um, if you were spinning a single. So you wanna make sure that you uh, put your cop, give like a lot of space there to wind up on. And then, so you wanna make sure that there's more coming out here. Give it a good twist anti-clockwise. And then I like let this the twist in here. And you can see that it is making this into a two ply. And I'm literally just plying the um, front end to the back end. Um, and I'm trying to do this in small bits so you guys can actually see um, what's happening. So again, I'll do this nice and slow and you guys, so to get, to get it off your hand, you just kind of put it through and then some comes off, put it back, some more comes off, put it through, some comes off. And then I hold down here, I give it a twist and then I just start letting the twist in to my two ply here, make it a two ply. you guys can see maybe if I kind of put it on my belly there you go so there we go two ply and we're just gonna keep doing that until it's all gone um, just make sure that you guys are doing it um, you guys are going anti-clockwise um, because if you spin it clockwise to ply, you're really gonna over twist your yarn and it's gonna come out in this big squidgy mess. And this will go a lot faster than actually spinning your single. <laughs> scoot back so you guys can see um, exactly how I'm doing it. Do you soak your yarn to set it? Um, so this one I probably will soak. Generally, um, generally my yarns for some reason I just really like steaming them. I like the way that it opens the fibers and it doesn't bog them down. And I do make a lot of really chunky, crazy art yarns. Um, so if, if, you, if you're into that and, and that's what you wanna be making, generally you'll wanna steam it. But um, this one right here, for example, um, doesn't really have a lot of crazy action going on. Um, it's just a standard two ply candy cane looking um so it, it'd be definitely safe to soak it um and then after you soak it um 
give it a gentle squeeze and a few thwacks um, just to kind of balance out your twist um, and get everything nice and even and then you'll hang it to dry um, do not weight it when when you hang it just um, hang it up on its own and you guys can see um, so I got a lot of texture in here because there's um, the white it has locks in it so it's coming out really pretty um, so I'm gonna pick up the pace um, and then you guys can see how I do the nitty naughty and then get it set up for steaming as well if you want if you want to hang out if not that's cool too and there's always the replay <clears throat> but um, so this makes pretty um, fast and easy work of the plying and like I said you just need the one drop spindle you don't need multiples um, so that's like definitely a plus and I just like the way it looks as well um, it really, uh, it, depending on like the colorway, um, it, it really, it really brings the colors together because you are plying from the same strand, but you're getting from different ends. So let's say like the color variation from the beginning to the end of the yarn was kind of drastic. It's really pretty when you ply them. Um, and see how it brings those two drastic changed colors together um, where they wouldn't have been next to each other if you would have plied from two separate um, yarns so um, and that's the same when you're doing your Navajo or chain plying um, it does this has the same kind of effect so it's pretty cool um, and I feel really bad about not doing the Navajo ply now because somebody, whoever <laughs> was saying, um, do you recommend a specific weight spindle for Andy implying? Absolutely not. <laughs> like you can, I could Andy imply with this. I can Andy imply with a Turkish spindle. I can Andy imply like in any weight, it doesn't matter. Um, top whirl, bottom whirl, it's all mechanically the same. It's mostly personal preference. And then sometimes it would matter like with the weight of your yarn, but really it only matters like if you want it to matter. Like I know a lot of people say, oh, you should have this weight if you want to spin this kind of yarn and this weight if you want to spin that kind of yarn. And I'd say that's definitely helpful information, um, but it's not like written in stone and, and it's absolutely, you can't spin this on that or that on this. Um, honestly, I just feel like at the end of the day, it comes down to personal preference because mechanically you're gonna get the same thing. Um, and it might take a little bit longer if you have to fiddle with stuff, but <laughs> I hope that answered your question. It really, what's your favorite spindle to spin on? Oh, well, of course my own spindles, <laughs> but <laughs> I, I, um, I don't know. I have a huge collection of spindles. Um, not just the ones I make. I collect from um, other people who make their own. I collect from big companies that make them. I have antique ones. Um, I have replicas. Um, so I don't know. I just really love like just the whole action and um, just the whole process of doing it. So I, I kind of just love all drop spindles. Um, but right now I'm really loving this one. Um, but I made this one, but you can see it has like a huge bubble in it right there underneath the gnome. So I can't sell it because it's not perfect, but it works perfect. Um, it just doesn't look perfect, but I don't mind. Um, so this is my favorite one right now. It has a really good medium weight, which I like because I can, you know, easily spin um, art yarns or thinner yarns. Um, it spins for a long time. 
and it's well centered. So when you're picking out your drop spindle, I think the most important thing to do is like take it for a test run and see how it feels in your hands. Make sure it's not like wobbly um, and uh, see if you like the weight. Um, I prefer heavier spindles. It's just, I like to feel like there's something in my hand and that when I twist it, it's not gonna go flying across the room. Um, so that's just my personal preference. So I would suggest to anyone who is trying to pick a drop spindle for a project or just to buy and learn is to just give it a try, put it in your hands. Um, anytime that anyone has a drop spindle, check it out um, because you know you don't know what you're gonna like and you might even know what you like but like you just don't know where to find it so um, I have I have north a <laughs> hundred drops yes yeah no I definitely have more than a hundred um, drop spindles um, and I definitely have like more than seven spinning wheels but <laughs> I think uh, I think it's okay because that, that's like a healthy um, addiction to have sort of <laughs> so we're looking pretty good here I'm winding my cop on I, I'm trying to get it like nice and even here um, because you don't want it looking all crazy on the bobbin I call it the bobbin it's not a bobbin um, on the spindle um, and I'd say we're about halfway done here And this is gonna look really pretty, I think. I mean, it has a lot going on with the colors, um, but this colorway, like I had mentioned before, I picked, um, I, I used it um, as a pal the last month's palette, Wafa palette. That's what I was trying to say. Um, and this is the colorway um, from last month's palette. So the strawberries with the, um, with the leaves and all that stuff. No calories and not illegal. Sure. You know, it's like totally good. Well, and portable and like total conversation starters. I mean, super win. <laughs> I mean, like, you know, I was saying, before, I mean, I hadn't even discovered drop spindling. Like, obviously, I knew about spinning wheels and stuff throughout my life. Um, I had never tried it, but I had seen it. I had heard of it. Um, but drop spindling was not something that I was ever exposed to. And the first time I saw it, it was, like, magical. Like, I can't explain it. How I just felt like, I don't know, like, holy crap <laughs> this lady is like a witch she's performing witchcraft on this and it is so amazing and why didn't I know about this and everyone needs to know because it's like the most incredible thing um, and so that's how I started drop spinning um, and I taught myself on this like janky like 300 year old replica drop spindle because I didn't know that they made like modern ones. So I got one from like a reenactment place. Um, and it was, it didn't have a hook and it was a, it was a bottom whirl, which I like bottom whirls. Um, but yeah, I, uh, <laughs> that's what I taught myself to spin on. But then, um, you know, I started collecting other ones and they always just seemed to be quite boring and stuff. Looking, boring looking. And I wanted some really fun, crazy ones and it turns out other people did too um so that's what i sell um i make and sell them um but you can always just make your own as well i mean it doesn't have to look good to work like i said the one that i'm using is one it's it's a defective one from my bunch but sometimes those ones are the best ones just because they don't look exactly good I'm seeing the comments. I'm a newbie. Are you rolling the yarn onto the spindle in a particular direction at the top? Okay, so um, that's a really good question. And I've been asked this one before, but only recently somebody, and I thought, I'm trying to 
see if there's more to this question. Top to bottom or in one place. Okay, yeah, so rolling it on to the actual cop, there's some controversy on um, the way that you roll it on. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. You just wanna make sure that you're rolling and you're not wrapping because that'll take forever. So you wanna put it in, in your fingertips and just roll it. And you can roll it this way or you can roll it that way. Obviously, it just has to be the same way the whole time. Um, when you are spinning, generally you will spin clockwise and then um, ply anti-clockwise. And again, it, it'll still work if you don't, but if you can't remember that you did that and then you go to ply it, and it falls apart, you'll know it's because you did it in the wrong direction. So if you just keep it the same every time. Now when you're ro winding it up onto your, uh, onto your drop spindle here on the dowel, so you're making your cup, um, I just try and keep it like not all zigzaggy, like I'll fill up this little, just the same as you would on a bobbin on a spinning wheel. Like I'll fill up this spot and then I'll kind of move it down and then I'll fill up this spot and fill up this spot and then I'll go start going back um, and filling up over here. Um, so that's how I wind it on and I try and keep it looking nice. Um, and it depends on also how you're going to take it off the bobbin. Like if you're going to just slide it off and use it like a cake, then you definitely want to be more mindful of how you're wrapping it on. Um, but if you're, if you're going to put it onto a nitty naughty, it doesn't really make that much of a difference um, because it's just going to come come back off flat anyways because you're adding it to the nitty naughty. And that's how I'm going to do it. <clears throat> but I always wrap the same way. You know, it's just good practice um, to do that. But that was a good question. Um, so you see I'm just kind of winding it. Okay, so this is a good learning point right here. So I got a little rough with it and I broke one of my, um, I broke my yarn. So here's the other piece. It doesn't matter. I'm literally just going to lay them on top of each other and tie a little knot here. And I'm gonna keep going like that didn't happen. And when I go back, and I wrap this on the nitty naughty and I make it all pretty. I'll chop this little fluff off and you will won't even be able to see that knot. I mean, it happens. I, I got a little rough with it and I broke it. Um, no big deal. We are not failures. All right, so keep going here. Looks like I'm like conducting some sort of orchestra or something. So. There's my mistake, and we're just gonna cover it right up, and we'll address it later when we come to it. So, we're getting there, guys. We're almost at the end here. So we wanna try and let the twist run evenly into our two, um, into our two pieces of yarn. Because if you don't let the twist in evenly, um, it'll just come out like kind of wonky. Like you, it's not going to be an even twist, um, which is fine if that's what you're going for. But if you're not, just make sure that you keep your fingers um, controlling the twist at all times so it doesn't travel up um, and make you a big knotted mess. Nearly there, though. Is anybody else spinning right now or am I the only one spinning? You know what I need guys? I need to get, I need to get like a, a huge stepping stool and then like I could be up by the ceiling and then I could just like spin all the way to the floor and that would be so much faster. Or I can use a spinning wheel. No, I use the drop spindle because it's, it's fun and relaxing, not because it's fast. 
All right, we're getting there, guys. I am very surprised that no one has knocked on my bedroom door in the last, I don't know how long have I been standing here. And it has been very quiet. I'm wondering if my husband just took my children somewhere. Um, so I wouldn't be able to hear them running around. <laughs> Aw, thank you. Yeah, it's not, you know, it's kind of weird doing these videos because you're just sort of talking to yourself, but it's it's nice when people, you know, kind of interact. I wish it was more like a Zoom call, you know, then you can kind of see the other people, and it's it's a bit weird talking to myself, but do you think about what you will make with the yarn? I do. I, this one I actually um, am spinning with an intent. Um, I have a special project that I have in mind um, that I am going to make. And I don't want to say what it is just in case it doesn't turn out. And then I could just be like, oh, that's not, that's not what I was going to make at all. <laughs> it's this other thing that it turned out to be. Um, <laughs> but I am spinning this one with something in mind. <clears throat> but a lot of times... I, um, my passion is the yarn, the actual yarn. Um, and like I said, I do, um, knitting and felting and crocheting and weaving. I do all of those things, but my number one favorite thing is the actual spinning. Um, so a lot of times I get that question, um, is what are you going to do with the yarn? And I generally will reply at my shows, like, what are you going to do? with my yarn because I spun it and you see it and you be inspired and make something with it. That's what I want. <laughs> like I just want to, my craft is the spin. Um, and that's hard for some people to understand is that once I spin it, I'm like done with my part of the art. Yes, I do other crafts, but, um, when I have such a limited amount of time, especially, with two young children, um, I, I like to spend my time doing the spin. And I do have um, baskets and baskets of hand spun yarns that just sit there as yarn. Um, I sell them and occasionally I get time to make things with them, but sometimes I don't. But I am really excited for some reason about weaving right now. Um, and no, this isn't for a weaving project, surprisingly, because I've been thinking a lot about weaving. Um, but I am going to be weaving soon with a bunch of my scraps, um, of previous hand spun. So maybe I'll do like, a another video on like how I use some of my hand spuns. Um, because I, I think I'm going to make a couple wall hangings, um, just to kind of put around. I have a couple um, back up here and like, or just around my workshop and stuff, but those aren't things that I sell because like I said, I, those are, I put in a lot of effort and it, my time is so scarce, like where I actually have time to myself. Um, and so those things I, I really value um, when I make projects, I, I have a hard time getting rid of them, like selling them or giving them away because I, I'm just uh, so in love with most of the things I make. I know that's kind of like a weird thing to say, but um, I like to keep my goodies. All right, we are so close to the end, guys. We are almost ready to nitty naughty. Get naughty on a Friday night. That's what we doing. All right. All right. So it's getting kind of a little chunky here, but we're still keeping it, keeping it nice, winding it on here. Just got a couple more of these little, this is going to look real pretty. And it would look amazing in some weaving. Um, art yarns and just 
crazy yarns, textured yarns, um, to me look so beautiful in weaving. Um, I am by no means like a master weaver, but I've seen a lot of my yarn in um, other people's weavings and it really does come out gorgeous, especially when you use a lot of texture and um, a lot of different colors and you just do something, you can make something very, very unique. Um, and yeah, I would have been done with this by now if I was doing it on a spinning wheel, but that's okay. How many ounces can you get on your spindle? <clears throat> That's also a good question <laughs> because I've done, I've spun at shows where I've like absolutely filled the thing, like um, just trying to see how much. Um, and and I usually talk in grams just because we came from the UK. We were there for fifteen years, um, so. 100 grams is like 3.5 oh i see my husband outside with the kids on the golf cart that's why I, that's why i can't hear them <laughs> he's looking to see if i'm done uh, um oh now i forgot okay yeah so um 100 100 grams um is 3.5 ounces um, and that's what I have on here right now. I, I only, I measured out um, 100 grams of roll ag, um, and, and I could fit more than this 100 grams, which is 3.5 ounces. Um, I would say I could comfortably fit probably like five ounces. Um, and then after that, it's just kind of pushing it. Um, <clears throat> so if that answers your question. Um, but it's all, honestly, like people ask me these very um, specific questions like that, and I'm not like knocking it. I, that's some people's method is not my method. My method is like, hmm, I have an idea. Let's try and make it. Oh, that failed, but it still looks really cool. Let's make it into something else. Um, so I just kind of, um, I just kind of go with the flow. That's that's how I that's how I produce my art. Um, I know some people are very exact and they don't like doing that. They want to measure everything. They want to um, plan it, um, and that I just that's not the way I do it. Um, but I can appreciate the folks who do. Now we have come to the end of the line. Right, so we have our nice big cop here. It looks like a nice big lollipop. We got to the end, and as you can see, all that's left is one little loop where it where it went back to itself. So I'm gonna bring you guys back over to the chair, and I'm gonna have a seat, and we are going to finish this up. Oh, let me put you down right here. Okay. Oh. That was making me hot. All right, so um, we'll just park this um, right here. I can kind of put this down a little bit so you guys can see. Um, and uh, if you guys look, um, I can literally just hold this piece and it's not unraveling, it's not twisting, it's not um, doing anything. This is a perfectly balanced yarn, okay? So when, when you um, spin it anti-clockwise, um, and you ply it, uh, you should get a balanced yarn. So yes, I am still going to set this yarn. I don't know if you guys can see it. I am still going to set this yarn, but it's pretty much set. Um, once, once you ply it, if you do it properly and you add the right amount of twist. Um, so I don't know why, but I always like tying a little knot in the end. You don't have to do that, but I do. All right, so we have um, our 
two-ply and implied. I'm going to use um, the Ashford uh, Mini Nitty Naughty, the, the sample one, because um, this is not a whole lot of yarn. Um, so we're going to make a mini skein here. And to, again, this is going to be a million wrapping. Um, I usually just hold um, the end in the middle and then I start my wrapping. And we're just gonna wrap this up nice and good. And obviously this is gonna be shorter than our single was. You plied it. You, you folded it in half is what you did. So um, it's gonna be shorter and that's fine. But it's also going to be stronger and more balanced. So we are getting to the end here though. So does anybody have any more questions about spinning in general, other things that you'd like to maybe see me demo in the near future, um, or like any other kind of drop spindling or spinning questions, or you tell me what you're working on. <laughs> I know it's quite boring just watching me do the nitty naughty, but here we are. So you can see perfectly balanced here. Um, if I put it next to itself, it's not even it's not even wrapping up on itself. It's completely, completely balanced yarn, which is perfect. And don't worry if yours doesn't come out like that. Um, when when you soak it and you flack it, if you guys have heard about flacking. Um, that helps also to balance out um, the twist. So um, that'd be a good thing to do. Okay, what is your steaming setup? <laughs> hmm, my setup. Well, my setup is a very cheap steamer from the big A word that we order. I don't know if we're allowed to, anyways, Amazon. Um, and I usually just hang it on a on a hanger and then I steam it. Um, sometimes I even hold it in my hand, very unsafe. Um, or I'll uh, hang it over just whatever and steam it. There's no um, special, um, I, I can actually get the steamer to show you. I was actually steaming some uh, earlier, so, um, and this is a really cheap steamer. Um, I can't remember, it's a Con Air one. It was like 10 bucks, maybe 14 on Amazon. And it works perfectly. It takes like two minutes to steam up and then you just um, hold it underneath your, your yarn um, and then you want to kind of rotate the yarn, make sure that the, the co all of it gets steamed. Um, so you want to, you know, shake it up a little bit so the steam gets in between um, all the strands of your yarn and the whole length of it. Um, thwacking helps a lot. Yes, it does. It definitely does. Um, do you do these regularly any set time? Oh, um... I, I, uh, I mean, I've been doing them regularly on Wafa and I generally do like Thursday or Friday at six o'clock, um, just because that's when my husband can kind of, um, corral the kids. Um, uh, I, I don't, I don't really have like a set time. I just kind of pick when I think I'll have a time and something that I have to work on. Um, and then I'll, and then I'll post it. It gets posted in Wafa. So you'll, you know, everyone can see it. Um, and my name is Vanessa Croning. Um, and I am also on Facebook as The Spinner Stash because that's the name of my, um, of my shop. And that's who I sell as um, during the Wafa sales. Um, but if you see Vanessa Croning, um, that's me <laughs> on, on Wafa. So if you see um, like a Wafa event with Vanessa Croning, that's, that's me. And generally, I mean, I like doing stuff on spinning. 
um, because it's my favorite thing. Um, but I did one last week on needle felting. So um, I, I do a range of different fiber arts. Um, a pot on a stove. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess that's the way you would do it. Like if you didn't have one or you could put it in, in the bathroom um, while you take a hot shower. Um, yeah, I mean, we people didn't always have these fancy things. But yeah, you could totally do that. Um, but not also not necessary. You can soak it. You can um, even let it sit um, and it'll... All right, so we got to the end here. And uh, so I have a little scissors, my children's scissors that actually work really good. And I'm thinking like, why do they give these to kids? Um, so we're done with the spindle. Now I have the, the two ends. Um, do you have to steam your yarn if you're doing a wall tapestry? Um, okay, so the steaming of the yarn is to set the twist so it doesn't unravel. Now, um, I plied this and it balanced it out beautifully. It's, it's not going to unravel. Um, if it was a single and it, and it had more twist than it ought to, a lot of times that's what happens then then it would unravel on itself and fall apart um, so generally any yarn that you make you're gonna want to set the twist just so it, do, it doesn't fall apart what it's doing is like the rapid um, change in temperature and agitation will slightly felt it and it'll stick all of the fibers um, to the fibers next to it and, um, and this is for protein fibers, like uh, sheep's wool or stuff like that, um, not synthetic. Uh, so if you're spinning a, some kind of synthetic, um, I, I don't know, <laughs> but um, because I deal with like real wool and stuff. <clears throat> but yeah, I, I would definitely say, I mean, it's not gonna go anywhere. You're gonna be banging it into a tapestry, but or, or a, what, a wall hanging, but I would definitely just do it anytime um, that you make any yarn, I would set the twist. An electric kettle works good too. Oh yeah, that, that would work. Okay, so we've got to the end. I have my other little end here. So we have our two ends on our Nitty Naughty, and I'm gonna go ahead and just tie the two ends together um, to secure this. And then I am going to do, since this is just, since this is like a mini skein, I think I'm just gonna tie two points of figure eights. Um, so I like to use um, this, it's like a really thick thread, almost like um, embroidery floss, um, because you don't wanna use like another hand spun yarn or something fuzzy to tie your yarn because it could felt to it um, especially if it's going to be sitting for any amount of time um, so just use something maybe synthetic or something that's not fuzzy um, and then here, let me see if I can angle this down sorry for the camera angle guys all right so we're going to do our figure eight here so I'm going to split this into two and We'll just put that like that, shove one of them back through, and tie this nice and loosely. And what this does is so when you take your skein off the Nitty Naughty, it doesn't come into like one big like rat's nest because that would be very unfortunate for all of the work that you just did. And then we'll tie another one on the opposite side. So we'll do our figure eight knot. I use my tension balance samples to tie my skeins. Tension balance samples. I don't actually know what that is. Tension balance samples? What is that? Tension. All 
All right, so I'm just cutting the extra little bits off. If anyone knows what the tension samples is, then you can explain it to me. All right, so we're ready for the great unveil. Um, so we will slide this off the knitted out And if you hold up your yarn and it doesn't twist on itself, then that means it's balanced. So you guys can see this is a very well balanced um, Andean plied yarn. And it's a simple yarn that, you know, it's not like anything fancy, but it's going to do what I need it to do. It's very strong because it's a two ply. So it's been bolstered up. And then, um, like I said, I'll probably just steam it just because I generally steam my yarns. That's what I'm used to do. This ensures that I will spin the same the next time to pick up this project. Oh yeah, no, you're, yeah, you're one of the people that I am not where you're very exact with your science. <laughs> no, I'm like, eh, we'll just put an eyeball it and we'll call it good. Um, <laughs> but, um, so here's the, this is what we made. And it, it, as you can see, it appears as a two ply. If you do the Navajo plying or chain plying, it will look like a three ply. Um, because you're making a loop, bringing it through. And when you, when you're, um, twisting them all together, it's three different strands of the same yarn plying. Um, yeah, it's a, it's an all right yarn. Um, so like, I mean, it's stru structurally, it's good. I would not have picked these colors like on my own, but this was last month's, um, color palette and then I, I was doing a demo um, but it's definitely gonna work for the little project that I'm gonna do um, I wouldn't like make a jumper out of it or anything but um, but for the project that I am going to attempt to make it's definitely gonna work um, there's lots of character lots of different colors lots of different textures um, so it's gonna look We'll look forward to your Navajo ply session. Yes, um, that, yeah. Navajo plying is definitely more difficult on the drop spindle. Um, it's, you could even just practice, if you have a spinning wheel, practice the Navajo plying on the spinning wheel will make it easier maybe for your brain. I don't know when you're, when you're doing it on the drop spindle, but, but I will do a demo of that um, and hopefully um, hopefully you guys learned something tonight. Um, and if I, like I said, my name is Vanessa Croning, um, and I have, um, a shop called the Spinner Stash. I post as both, um, when I do waffle posts. So if you see me say hello. Um, and if you guys want something in specific, especially, um, using the drop spindle, if you want to see how to do something, um, just let me know and I can create an event in Wafa and do demos um, because I do a lot of drop spinning and experimenting and um, stuff like that. So um, generally, I could probably help you out. Okay, so um, I'm going, I'm doing a spinning wheel for sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay, guys. Well, thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you learned something. And again, I'm Vanessa Croning from the Spinner Sash. And I hope to see you guys maybe at another demo. Okay, thanks. Bye.